In scenario one, the fast boat signaled appropriately for permission to pass, but he didn't wait for acknowledgement. The story ended without harm, as many close calls do. But imagine if the slow captain suddenly turned to port. In scenario two, the fast boat skipper not only failed to wait for a signal from the slow boat, but he failed to warn the slow boat he planned to overtake him and was also unable to see the swimmer the slow boat was avoiding. In scenario three, you get an idea about why it's important to establish communication with the slow boat. He's in a better position to know the hazards the fast boat is risking in overtaking. If it had been safe to overtake, the slow boat captain would have returned two short horn blasts to indicate it was safe to pass. Once you've determined that an overtaking situation exists between your vessel and the one in front of you, your relationship to that vessel cannot be changed by outmaneuvering him. You are the burdened or the giveaway vessel until you reach an agreement with the privileged or the stand-on overtaken vessel for safe passage. As the stand-on vessel, your responsibility is to confirm the overtaking vessel can safely accomplish the maneuver What's more, you cannot unreasonably withhold your permission from another vessel desiring to pass. The U.S. Coast Guard rules of navigation only work well when they're observed and executed by well-intentioned, reasonable skippers. Using the tenets of the rule to hog the road is as much of a violation of the rule's spirit as improperly overtaking another vessel.